Hey, what's up, VR devs? Welcome back to Muddy Wolf, your go to channel for all things VR and game development. I'm Tyler Potts, and today we're diving into the exciting world of VR development using the Godot engine. Whether you're a complete noob or just curious about creating your first VR game, you've come to the right place. We're keeping things simple, so buckle up and let's get into our VR development for dummies with Godot. First things first, you'll need to download Godot. Head over to GodotEngine.org and grab the latest stable version. It's open source and lightweight, so it's perfect for beginners. Once you've installed it, fire up Godot and create a new project. VR development can feel overwhelming, but luckily some of our friends over at Godot have made a asset or an add-on for Godot that helps with VR. So let's actually go and set that up. So first things first, we want to head over to project settings, head down to VR or XR, oh, select open XR and select enable. The next thing you want to do is go over to shaders and enable these two. Now it's going to ask us to save and restart, but we're going to wait before doing that. Let's over to our assets and just search for XR tools in the asset library. You're going to see a tool come up by Mux213. Now this tool is the, I'm pretty sure the official tool uh, recommended by Godot for setting up simple XR interactions. So let's actually download. Once you get this, just click install and all of this will be added into our rest folder down here. Now you're going to get a bunch of warnings. Just ignore them. It's because we haven't enabled the actual plugin yet that comes with this add-on. So select projects, uh, project projects, uh, and go to our plugins and just enable the Godot XR tools here. That should have it all ready and set up. And now we can save and restart our Godot. So now VR is essentially ready to go, we need to set up our first scene. First things first, head over to a 3D and just click the 3D node. This is just going to add in basically our root node of our 3D scene. And in here, we're just going to call this the main uh, main node. And I'm going to press Control and S to save this into our directory as main.tscn. That just stands for scene. Save that and there we go. We can right click this and we're going to set as main scene because this will be the scene we want to load first when we load up our Godot application. Now the next thing we can do is we can press Control Shift A and that is going to open up this child instantiation and we're going to search for start. Now this is in the Godot XR tools add-ons. You can see that here is what we just installed uh, and we're going to just open that and add that in. It's going to have a script that essentially initializes VR for our device uh, and it, handle, it handles all the setting up and the getting started part. So let's actually build our character or our VR controller here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click a new scene and I am just going to select other node and search for XR and what we want to do is select XR origin 3D and that is going to add in our base uh, XR setup. Next up we actually need a camera so what we're going to do is search for XR camera 3D add that in and that is going to be how we see in our VR world. Now to add to this we actually need some hands so what I'm going to do is press control a and I'm going to search for XR or oh, X our controller 3D and this is going to be one of our hands so I'm going to rename this to left hand and then over here I'm going to go tracker and select the left hand tracker so it'll always track my left hand and then I'm going to create another one and this is going to be called our right hand and we just want to select the tracker and select right hand now by default these are not going to do anything so these are just going to, well, these are going to just track your hand, but you're not going to be able to see it. Sorry, I should explain that a bit better. You're not going to see it. So from my point of view, it feels like it's doing nothing. So to make this work, what we're going to do is we're going to use the XR tools again. And we're going to search for a low poly left. And here we, if you search low poly slash left in our instantiation card, again, control shift A to open this up. What we're going to do is select uh, one of these hands to actually use. Now the, you can use pretty much any of these, but I recommend not using the physics hands because we're not going to go over any of how that works yet. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll select the left full glove low. This click open and now we'll add it in here. And as you can see in our scene, we actually have a hand that's going to be in our game. And all the interactions, the poses are all going to be default and set up by the XR tools. Now in the right hand, we're going to do the exact same. We're going to say low poly slash, but this time we're going to search for slash right. And this is going to come up with the full glove low, which we'll add in the right hand too. And there you go. We can see we have two hands that when we start the game should follow our um, character's hands. So what we're going to do is control 
S and I'm just going to save this as a new scene. I'm going to call this the player um, and just hit save. So that's going to save it in there. Now let's go back into main and let's drag our player into our main scene. And there he is, all set up and ready to go. Now, you're not going to notice too much if we launch this game. It's going to actually be dark as well. So we actually need to add in our environment here. So these three dots, click them, go to add sun. Which is going to add some light and add environment to scene. It's just going to give us some light so we can actually see stuff when we launch our game. Because if you don't have these, it will look a bit dull and nothing will work very well. Now before we add anything else this game, let's actually test this out by hitting play. Now to do this, I'm going to open, I'm going to be using the MetaQuest 2. And I'm going to search for MetaQuest Link and open this up. This is going to open up the MetaQuest interface. Now you'll need to connect yours however else you want to connect yours. All you need is a VR headset connectors. You can use Steam VR as well if you have a Steam Valve Index. Just make sure it's on and the Steam VR is running. Uh, and for those with MetaQuest, use something like this. However you would normally connect your Quest device to your PC, basically do that. Okay, now that's all connected. As you can see on screen, it says it's active. What I'm going to do is minimize this and all I'm going to do is hit play. Now this should launch up, I'm just going to full screen this for you so you can actually see and if I put this on and pick up my controllers, you can see my hand has come to me and where's the upper one, let it load in, there we go. So now you can see my hand and if I press the triggers, they will actually close and do as I said. So now we can look around this world, although it's, it's an endless void, so it's not very exciting. Alright, let's fix that up. So we have nothing in our world. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press A and I'm going to create a uh, mesh instance 3D. And I'm just going to select a plain mesh here as our ground. And I'm going to set this to be about 10 by 10. Give it a nice wide. And we can even set a material on this. Let's change its colour to a slightly bit more grey. Let's just bring it something like that. There we go. A little grey just helps helps make it easier for me to see because I'm slightly blind. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a table to this. So let's do another one. But this time we're going to use a static body 3D. By the way, to open up that menu, what I just opened up, it's Control A. And that will open up a create new node. You can also come up here and select this to open that. And this will open up the other one we do with Shift A um, as well. So let's just add this and what we're going to do is add a static body to the scene and in there we're going to add in a mesh instance um, where we're going to create just a cube or a square if I can find it, a box mesh, that is what we're looking for. Um, and we will make this uh, X, 0 0.5, oh well actually no, 1 and the said 0 0.5 and I'm just going to move the static body back a little bit so it's not right up against us. Uh, we could probably have it a little closer. There you go. Um, and there we go. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mesh, go to mesh, and click create collision shape, sibling, tri mesh, or we can actually go something simplified convex. That should just create a simple um, mesh on this here. Um, I think we can see it. It's a bit hard to see because the lighting. Uh, but there we go. There is now a collision shape on here as well. There you go. You can kind of see that. It's actually a bit small. I might delete that. And we're going to attempt to use a collision shape and single convex. And there you go. That's that's much better. That matches it perfect. So you can see it's a little box there. So now we're going to open up our inside check child again. It's just this button up here. And we're going to search pickable. And we're just going to add in a pickable object. Now in here, we're going to add in a mesh instance 3D. Um, which again, we're just going to use something simple like a box mesh, but it's going to be a lot smaller. We'll say 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Um, and then let's create a, another collision shape with a single convex around this. Now we're going to select the pickable object and we're going to move it up, bring it back up and just put it hovering above this. Okay, but now with this cube in here in a pickable object, which is how we allow things to be picked up, what we need to do is actually add in the ability for our player to actually pick it up. We need to add in a function, which is built again into the add-on. So what we're going to do is we're going to select right and left hand, and we are just going to search by pressing Control shift a and add in a pickup function. Well, it only added it to one, but we'll do is copy and paste that under our right hand here as well. Um, I know this confused, it says right hand and right hand. So we're going to rename this to right hand controller and this will be left hand 
controller as well, just to make things a bit more readable there. And now we have the fig pickup function. We can go back to our main scene, and what we can do is we can just hit play. All right, now we're here. We can actually grab our cube, throw it up in the air, catch it. And there you go. We can actually go and grab and interact with a cube inside of VR. As you can see, it's pretty cool. We can actually put it through if we drop it there, but that's something for a different day. And there you go. You can see this cube is pretty cool. And that's it. You've just set up your first VR project in Godot, complete with basic interactions. There's so much more we can explore, but we'll save that for the next video. We'll dive into more advanced VR mechanics and even world building. Now, if you found this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe and hit that no notification bell so you don't miss the next tutorial. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas for future videos. Until next time, keep creating, keep learning. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.